Hello and welcome to You So You. My name is Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. This week we have a project based video for you. It's a beginner friendly knitting project but anybody else is welcome to join in as well. You don't have to be a beginner to take part. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. A particular welcome to any brand spanking new knitters out there looking for your first project or to even learn a few basic stitches. The project we're going to be looking at this week is a dishcloth. Now the experienced knitters out there will be sitting there going, huh, dishcloth. Knock one of those out in no time at all, they're really quite simple. Well, they are when you've got a bit of experience behind you but they actually need quite a few techniques in order to achieve the, the, the square shape. So, the project we are going to be doing is this dishcloth. You will notice it's not perfectly square, that's because I haven't blocked it, because it's a dishcloth. Um, for the new knitters amongst you, blocking is when you soak a project and pin it out to the shape and size that you want it to be, and let it dry. We don't need to do that with dishcloths because they're dishcloths. They don't need to be perfect, which is why they are a great startup project. Um, in the process of knitting this dishcloth, you are going to learn how to do one type of cast on. There are lots of types of cast on. Every experienced knitter will have their favourites for different types of projects. Uh, you're going to learn the basic knit stitch, the basic purl stitch. You're going to learn to increase, uh, well, one method of increasing stitches. You're going to learn two methods to decrease stitches and you're going to learn one of the many different cast-offs because just like cast-ons different projects will need a different technique um, or experienced knitters will prefer a different technique for different projects I should say. So without further ado let's get to it. Okay so this is the yarn I am using. Uh, if you aren't sure what needles to start with or what have you, the information is on the ball band for you, so you'll be able to see an image of a pair of knitting needles, an image of a crochet hook somewhere on the, the ball band, usually with gauge numbers around it as well, but we'll get into gauge at another point. The manufacturer is recommending 4.5 millimeter needles, uh, the US size is underneath there for this particular yarn, and for crochet, it's recommending a 5 millimeter hook, again, the US size is also featured. Um, the yarn I'm using is 100% cotton because it's a washcloth or a dishcloth. You're going to want to be able to, to wash it at fairly high temperatures. And then we are using for the weight of the yarn, that's not the, the grams, it's the thickness of the yarn, we're using a worsted weight yarn. So if you, once you've got your cotton yarn and you've worked out what the recommendations are, uh, time to get your needle sorted. I'm actually going up a couple of needle sizes so that it's a looser, softer fabric, which is going to be better for a cloth. So I'm using 5.5 millimeter needles. So um, as a beginner, don't go down below the size that the manufacturer recommends. Use that size or higher. And I would recommend using higher for this type of project um, because you're going to be knitting quite tight as a beginner anyway. Um, so using a large needle is going to make a looser, softer, more drapey fabric that's going to work better for a cloth. So I'm going to wrap the yarn twice around my fingers on my left hand to start the cast on. I'm going to take the needle in my right hand, go under the yarn and over the back yarn, pull it through to create a slip knot. I'm doing it this way around because I'm right handed and I'm an English knitter. Um, so I use the English technique or throwing. If you're left handed, by all means. Uh, mirror what I'm doing. So you want that X across the top of your two fingers and you're going to create a slip knot by going under and over the yarns. Now I'm going to swap that round into my left hand. So the left hand is going to hold the tail of the, the yarn, so the bit that's not attached to the ball, and the needle. I'm going to take the other needle, so I'm using circular needles here but you can also use straight, um, and with my right hand I'm going to hold the second needle and I'm going to wrap the yarn around it so it's under tension. Not so tight that it's cutting off the circulation to my finger, that would be bad. 
I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to bring it to the left hand side of the loop on the left needle and pop it through the loop underneath the needle. So it's going from front to back, from the left to the right, underneath that le uh, needle to create an X shape. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn around below that lower needle so that it goes between the two needles as they cross. Then I'm going to pull it through to the front. And yes, you can use your fingers and thumbs to help you if you need to. It can be a bit awkward, particularly when you've only got a few stitches there. So I'm going to drop that loop onto the left hand needle from the right and we've cast on two stitches. I'm going to do that one more time. Wrap the yarn up through between the two needles. Pull it through to the front. And drop the loop to the left hand needle. We've cast on three stitches. In English language knitting patterns, that would be written as C03. So next we are going to be knitting those same three stitches that we've just cast on. So again, from the left underneath the left hand needle, just like we did for the cast on, put the right hand needle through and wrap the yarn round, pull it through to the front. This time we're going to slip it off the left hand needle and leave it on the right. So through, wrap, through, and off. Through, round, through, and off. So in English language patterns, the knit stitch is written K, so that would be K3, knit 3. Okay, so now we're going to swap the needles round so that we can work the wrong side row. Um, so the front of the work is always the bit facing you. The wrong side is the bit that's going to be private when you finish the project. So this time we're going to be purling. So again, we're going to hold the yarn under tension. We're going to bring the needle through from the back this time. So it's coming under the needle from right to left through that front loop. And we're going to wrap the yarn around through between the needles and then around to the underneath. So it's going to go over the top of that front needle in between that X. And again, we're going to pull it through just like we did for the knit stitch and drop that stitch off the left needle, leaving a loop on the right. So through right to left, wrap through and off through wrap through and off so turn the needles back and work a right side row so this is the side that is facing when you're public to start increasing by knitting into the front of the stitch and then knitting into the back of the stitch so we're going to do this on the first two stitches so as you can see, we're swinging the needle around before we take the loop off the left hand stitch, putting the needle back through the loop and knitting again. And then we're going to take the stitch off the left hand needle. So you might need to watch this a couple of times before you have a try. So again, we're going to knit into the front of the stitch. So from the left to the right, wrap through the middle of the stitches, put through the front, swing the needle to the back and put it from the right to the left through the back of the loop. Knit again by wrapping the needle and pulling it through and then drop that off the left hand needle. So we've got four on the right, one on the left. We're going to knit that last stitch just the once. So we've now got five stitches in total. We've increased two stitches. The knit front and back, back is written KFB in knitting. And we're now going to just purl right the way across the row. So through the front of the loop from right to left with the yarn at the front of the work, so the side that's facing you as you work. Wrap it round, put it through, pull it off all the way to the end of the row. All of our wrong side rows are purled all the way across 
uh, throughout this project. So you're going to get a lot of practice in, uh, in knitting and in purling. But just remember every time you've got the, the lumpy side of your work facing you, that's going to be purls all the way across. So turn it back to face you and we're going to increase another two stitches. But we don't need to KFB in it front and back in the first stitch anymore. We're going to do that in the second stitch. So we're going to knit the first stitch, just a single stitch, so as normal. Oops, that sometimes happens, don't worry. <laughs> we're not we're all uh, capable of making things wrong a little bit from time to time. And yeah, so now in the second stitch, we're going to knit through the front. Spin the needle around to the back and knit through the back of that same stitch. We're going to knit the next stitch and then KFB into the one before the last stitch. So knit through the front, spin the needle around to the back and knit through the back. Then we're going to knit the next stitch. Okay, and turn the work and we're going to purl another row all the way to the end. So I'm just going to show you a little bit more before we sort of jump ahead so you've got a a fair few examples to watch um, whilst you're getting started. Obviously, if you need to rewind this section and watch it a few times, that's absolutely fine. Um, by all means, do that. If you need to keep pausing so that you can see what my hands are doing, by all means, do that too. Hopefully my cat is not too distracting. I'm not sure if the microphone is picking her up or not. She's playing with her toy. Okay, so we're back to a right side row. So this is the smooth side of the work uh, for this particular project. Okay, I'm going to knit that first stitch. And then we're going to knit front and back into the second stitch. Again, we're going to knit the next few stitches before working a KFB into the stitch before the last stitch. So then there's two left on your left hand needle. Knit front, spin the needle to the back and knit through the back loop. And then knit the final stitch. Okay, so you can see you've got the smoother texture on the front and when you turn it around so the back, the wrong side is facing you, there's that lumpier texture. The purl stitch will create a lumpier texture. So it's going to purl another row all the way across. So it's there. Fairly easy pattern to remember as you get going. At the moment, we're basically knitting a right angled triangle. So you're going to end up with two sides exactly the same length with a right angle between them. Right angle triangle is going to be the height that we want our dishcloth to be. Uh, so this is a fabric called stocking stitch that we're producing. It's smooth on one side, the right side, and uh, you can actually see some of the increases on the sides of that one. And on the reverse, we have these lumpy pearl bumps. That's the wrong side of this particular type of stitch. So in, in the UK, we call it stocking stitch. If you're American, you probably call it stockinette. So we're going to continue in the same way until our triangle is as tall as we want it to be, um, knitting one row, purling the next row with those increases at either end. So once it's tall enough, now I'm, I'm actually using my hand as a guide here because I like my dishcloth and my washcloth to be about the height of my hand or slightly taller, and that's a good size for me. 
So now we're ready to start decreasing in order to complete our square. So we're going to start off uh, very simply with a knit one at the edge of the, the dish cloth. So just the same as we've done before, put the needle in from left to right through the front of that loop underneath the left needle and wrap the yarn, pull it through, drop it off the left needle. And for our first decrease, we're going to be working these two stitches, stitch two and stitch three. So we're going to slip one stitch, slip the next stitch onto the right needle. So we're doing those both as if we were knitting. Put the left needle through the front loops of both and knit them as if they were one stitch. So when you're slipping, you're slipping knitwise from left to right. This is called SSK or slip, slip, knit. And you're basically reversing the order the stitches are worked so that you're hiding one stitch behind the other. So we're now going to knit across the row until we have three stitches left on the left hand needle. And we're going to work our next decrease, which is a different decrease at that point. So three stitches left on the left hand needle and we'll be ready for our, our next decrease. So this is going to be a K2 top or a knit two together. It's worked on the third to last and second to last stitch of the row. So we're going to put our needle through both stitches from left to right, from front to back, and knit as if they are one stitch. As I say, that's called K2 tog or knit two together. And knit the last stitch as per normal. Okay, so the next row, as with every other wrong side row, is purled. So when we get back to our right so side row again, having purled our wrong side row, we're going to do the same thing again. So we're going to knit the first stitch and SSK slip, slip, knit, stitches two and three. the left needle through the front of the loops, wrap the yarn round and knit the two stitches as if they are one. Then knit to, until you have three stitches left, ready to K2 tug, knit two together to decrease at the end of the row. So that's putting the, left, the needle through from left to right, front to back, and knitting the two stitches as one to complete the decreases for that row. So we've now established what our pattern is. We're going to keep going in the same way, um, decreasing on our right side of our knit rows and purling all of our wrong rows, in, our wrong side rows rather, until we're back to our three stitches uh, that we began the project with. That's what we're aiming for. We need three stitches to cast off to create a square. So as you can see, I've got five stitches left on the needle now. And we're not going to be able to do the decreases in exactly the same place on this row to get back to three because we just haven't got enough stitches to work with. So we're going to adapt it slightly. What we're going to do is we are going to knit the first stitch. Then we are going to SSK stitch two and three, the so slip, slip, knit, before knitting the last two stitches together. So again, back to small numbers, so sometimes that last little Bit of a row can be a bit tricky, so yep, use your thumbs or your fingers to help if you need to. And if you need to take the needle out and start again, that's fine too. I do that all the time when I slightly misplace my needle. It's not a problem. So we've done all of our decreases. We're back to three stitches. And we're ready to work our final wrong side row. So that's three purl stitches. Just the same as we've done all the way through the project. And then we'll be looking at casting off. Which in uh, some plate, some patterns, and a lot of patterns, you'll see written as BO for bind off, which is an interchangeable term with cast off. To work our cast off, our bind off, we're going to knit the first two stitches just the same as we have all the way through the project. But we're not going to knit the third stitch just yet. So knit two. Her needle, we're going to take our left hand needle and lift one stitch, the first stitch, 
over the second stitch and off the right hand needle. We're going to do the same again. So we're going to knit the last stitch on the left hand needle and then use the left hand needle to put the first stitch on the right hand needle over the second stitch and off the needle. And obviously we've got no more sti knit stitches left to knit after this. So our last stitch is going to work slightly differently. To work this final stitch, all we need to do is with a nice sharp pair of scissors, cut the yarn and pull it through. After that, all that remains is to weave in our ends and use our dish. Two ends to weave in, one at the starting corner and one at the end corner. Uh, there's lots of different theories on the best way to weave in the ends. As far as I'm concerned, the best way is to do it is the way that you find easiest and that is relatively secure. So I'm going to use a darning needle or a, a tapestry needle or a wool needle. You can see them labelled as all sorts of, of things. It's going to be a big eye and it's going to be fairly blunt. Um, some of them have got a little crooked tip on them which can be helpful for getting under stitches. Uh, so with the fun of threading the needle, then you are quite simply going to weave the ends in and out of those pearl bumps on the wrong side of the fabric. And uh, trim it slightly longer than where it's coming in, because the end will move around a little bit. So if you cut it right up to the stitch, A, you risk cutting the stitch, and B, there's a chance it's going to come unwoven earlier than you would think it would. So yeah, just weave it in amongst all the uh, wrong sides. You can basically see that what I'm doing here. I'm just picking up one of those pearl bumps, running my needle underneath it. I'm using one of the crooked ended needles in this case, um, which helps pick them up. So I'm going back and forth in amongst those pearl bumps. Uh, so that'll sort of hide the extra thickness of that end that I'm weaving in. Uh, as well as getting out of the way. So I'm pretty happy with how much I've woven in there. You don't need to do a, a lot, just uh, through a few stitches, a couple of rows if they're short rows. Um, so you want to pull that through gently, don't, not too tight so you don't distort the fabric. That's another reason for not cutting it too short actually as well when you, you weave them in. Um, particularly as dishcloths are going to be used quite heavily. Okay, so here's the finished dishcloth. As you can see, it's not quite a perfect square. If you wanted to make it perfect, you can block it so you'd soak it and uh, pin it out. But this is a dishcloth, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay, so as I said at the beginning, I haven't bothered to block this dishcloth because it's a dishcloth and I quite frankly don't see the point. However, if you were knitting this out of a wool yarn, um, you could block it out and do a whole bunch of them and turn them into a blanket. You could do a larger square for a single square blanket. And when you get to the middle, to the diagonal across here, you could actually knit and purl a few rows without increasing or decreasing and turn it into a rectangle. So there is actually quite a lot you can do with this basic square. Um, and actually, you've learned the basic stitches. All the different textures in knitting um, are all combinations of knit and purl. Um, cables are knits and purls where you're just switching around the order that the stitches are worked in. Lace, you're going to be doing a different type of increase um, to create the holes in the fabric, um, a different type to the one that we've used today. But you're going to be using decreases like we've used today. So you've actually got a lot of skills just from doing this dishcloth. It might have taken you a while. That is okay. Knitting is not a race. Uh, there's no, no, no reason to knit things quicker than you're capable of. There's no reason to knit things quicker than you want to. Uh, it's supposed to be relaxing as well as productive. So yeah, um, do it at the pace that, t that you enjoy. And as you get more experience, you may find that pace increases just because you get more used to the stitches and what have you. Um, but like I say, it's not a race. Nobody's going to actually judge you for taking a couple of weeks to do a dishcloth rather than a couple of days. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, so that's the basic beginner-friendly dishcloth pattern. I would love to see them, so by all means, 
pop over to Instagram or Twitter and post them there. My handle is at you so you and you can use this hashtag to uh, link these projects as well and I would love to see them if you do make them, particularly if you are a beginner knitter. Um, so yeah, so that's all we have to do today. Like and subscribe and ding the bell and do all the things down below that all the YouTubers tell you. I aim to post a video every weekend, sometimes it's slightly delayed. Um, I've only missed one week this year so far, so that's not bad going. Now we're halfway into the year. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's it slips over into a Monday morning a little bit because schedules go a bit haywire. Um, hopefully that will be balancing out in the next few weeks. We shall see. Um, but yes, that's all I have for you today. I look forward to spending a bit more time with you next weekend. And until then, happy crafting and bye-bye for now.